Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to integrate 1 over x squared times square root of 1 minus x squared. So, as we can see, we don't have any like obvious rules up, right? It's not x over square root of 1 minus x squared. It's not like that. So, for this kind of situations, let's go ahead and use tricks up for this. And because the inside here, we have 1 minus x squared, I'm going to use x equal to sine theta because I know 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. That's going to help us out. If we had x squared minus 1, I will be using secant, because we know secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared theta. Right? Anyway, I will begin by saying that x equal to sine theta. And some people might notice, couldn't we use 1 minus cosine squared theta? that's equal to sine theta, that's fine too. If you begin by letting x equal to cosine theta, everything will work out nicely as well. But the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and we don't like negative sometimes, right? So we use positive sine x for x. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the usual business. Differentiate both sides. dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. And then we just have to put this right here into the original integral, and we'll take this integral into the theta world. We see we will have 1 over x is the sine theta, and we square that, so we have sine square theta right here. And then inside here we have the square root 1 minus x is once again sine, and we have that square, and then we have the theta here. And don't forget the dx, dx is just cosine theta, d theta. So let's go ahead and put that down right here. And now, we notice here is just cosine square theta inside of the square root. So I can write this as a square root of cosine square theta. And we are going to cancel out the square and the square root. And you don't have to worry about the absolute value right, for the integration purpose. Just put down cosine theta is just as fine for integration purpose. Only worry about the absolute value when you have like numbers of integration, like limits of integrations. Anyway, this cosine theta is in the denominator, and this right here, we can cancel them out, right? This is on the numerator. So, all in all, we have what? It's just the integral of, that's all, but just 1 over sine squared theta, and we know 1 over sine is cosecant. And here we have the square, so I will just put this down as cosecant square theta d theta. And the integral of this is what? We have to know our derivative table really, really well. The answer to this is negative cotangent theta. Right? Because if you differentiate cotangent theta, you get negative cosecant square theta. I need to have another negative, so I will end up with positive right here. So this is pretty much it, but as always, we will have to go back to the x world. So I will be coming back here and look at this, and perhaps I'll just put it here. I will write down sine theta is equal to x, and I will put that as x over 1. This way, I know the top is my opposite, and then the denominator is my hypotenuse. And let's draw the right triangle this way. Opposite is x, and hypotenuse is 1, and the adjacent, and don't forget this is the angle theta, the adjacent is just you open the square root, and then you do the hypotenuse square minus the other side square, that's what we have. So, in the end, negative is the negative, cotangent theta, by looking at this triangle, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, so it's just this over that. So we have the square root, 1 squared is 1, and then minus x squared, all over x. And that's it, we're done. So in the end here, I'll just put on the plus c. This right here is our answer. And for the people who are still watching, this bonus part is for you. Anyway, a lot of people think that this integral can only be done by using tricks up. But let me show you guys how we can actually do use up right here as well. 
Well, it's not that easy to see, but you know, this is maybe just from experience or maybe something that you have to learn so that later on when you encounter a new integral, you can use the similar strategy. Anyway, let's take a look of the inside right here. Get one minus x squared. Of course, this is just a difference of two squares. We can factor it. We can do one plus x times one minus x. Sure, but that won't help. We do have another way to factor, right? Well, unfortunately, they don't have any common factors, but when calculus, we can do some crazy factor. I'm going to factor out the highest power of x right here. So let me show you. This right here is the integral of 1 over x squared, and we have the square root. I'm going to factor out x squared from both terms. And we see that when we do that, originally I only have 1. So I better have x to the negative 2 power, because when you multiply this and that, you do get a 1. And then the second term is just minus, and then we have the 1, because the x squared is out right here already, and you will see where we are going. Right? And now you see this is the integral, and we have 1 over, and this is x squared. And here we have x squared inside of the square root, so that's just x to the first power, so let's just multiply by x to the first power. No more square root. It's out of the square root because it has enough power to get out. Anyway, we have the square root, and here we have x to the negative 2 power minus 1. And now you see x to the second times x to the first, of course that's x to the third. But the beauty of doing this is that inside here we have x to the negative 2 power minus 1. This right here is x to the third power, but it's in the denominator. If I bring that up to the numerator, it becomes x to the negative 3 power. If now you let u equal to this, the derivative of x to the negative 2 minus 1 is negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. Aha! Now you see where we're going, huh? So with that being said, let me just do that here. I'm just going to bring them up, and this is going to be x to the negative 3 power, and this is over square root of x to the negative 2 minus 1 dx. And right here, we can do our usual u substitution, and I'll just write this down for you guys. I will let u equal to just the inside, x to the negative 2 minus 1, and as always, differentiate both sides, du is equal to negative 2 x and u minus 1. So it becomes negative 3. And of course, you have the dx. And let me just divide this on both sides so I can get dx by itself. dx is equal to du over negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. And now let's take this integral to the u world. This is now the integral x to the negative 3 power on the top over square root of u. And dx is that, so I'll just put down du over negative 2 x to the negative 3. And what happens? Of course, x to the negative 3, they cancel each other out. So we are completely in the u world. We can totally integrate this. Now I will show you this right here. Let me bring the negative 1 over 2 in the front, and then we have the integral. The square root is in the denominator, so I'll write this down as u to the negative 1 half power du, and then we can integrate that. I will just add 1. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And divided by positive 1 half, it's the same as multiplied by 2 over 1. So you see, this and that cancel each other out. And I have negative u to the 1 half power. And of course, I can write this down as negative square root of u. And of course, this is negative square root. u is that, so that's x squared minus 1. And we are pretty much done. Well, negative 2 right here. This right here doesn't look like that, but we can of course make it to be the same. I'll show you. This right here is the same as a negative square root. Bring this down to the denominator, namely 1 over x squared and then minus 1. And of course, I can get the common denominator, x squared here and x squared here. Then we see that this right here is negative and let me just open the square root. On the top, I have 1 and then minus x squared all over x squared. And of course, you can do the square root on the top and square root on the bottom. So in the end, we see we have the negative 
square root of 1 minus x squared. That's just how it is right here. And then over square root of x squared is just simply an x. And then in the end, you put down plus c. And of course, we have the same answer now. All right, so leave a comment down below and let me know. Do you guys like the theta world? Or do you guys like the u world? And of course, I would say, if you see this right here, u world is pretty cool. But data world, you cannot go wrong in this kind of situation. Anyway, comment down below and if you're new, please subscribe. Thank you.